video, we are going to see that how different systemic conditions like your diabetes, autoimmune conditions, different hematological disorders, how they are going to affect the periodontium. So first of all, students, we should try to understand that the relationship between the periodontal infections and host defense is very complex. So there are a number of factors that will have the potential to alter the host immune response against the bacteria and thereby resulting in more severe periodontal disease destruction. So the pathogenesis of periodontitis is that the host response varies among individual and that an altered, deficient or exaggerated host immune response to the bacterial pathogen may lead to more severe form of disease. So there are many systemic disease disorders and conditions which are indicated as the risk indicators or risk factor in developing a periodontal disease. So if you look at different disorders here, first of all, we will try to understand that how these disorders are going to accelerate or increase the disease progression, how they are going to affect the host barrier function, immune defense against the periodontal pathogen that will create an opportunity for the destructive periodontal disease to progress. So first of all, we see some endocrine disorders and the hormonal changes and definitely diabetes is number one and which are also associated disorders with puberty, pregnancy, endocrine disturbances and hormonal fluctuations student, it affect the periodontal tissue directly. It will modify the tissue response to the local factor and produce anatomic changes in the gingiva that actually prefer uh, favor more plaque accumulation and the disease progression. So let us start with the diabetes first. The diabetes mellitus uh, students, it's a complex disorder which is characterized by chronic hyperglycemia. So we can have diminished insulin production here or we can have impaired insulin action or resistant to receptors for the insulin or the combination of both of them that will create an inability of the glucose to be transported from the bloodstream into the tissue which turns lead to high glucose level in your blood and excretion of sugar like in the urine. Lipid and protein metabolism is also affected in diabetes. So when the patient has an uncontrolled diabetes it is associated with severe long-term complication, not only on periodontium, patient will have complications like retinopathy, nephropathy, neuropathy, macrovascular diseases, cardiovascular, cerebrovascular diseases, and overall, there will be increased susceptibility to infection and also poor wound healing. So if you see the type 1, the type 2 diabetes, we know type 1 is insulin dependent and type 2 is non-insulin dependent. Non-insulin dependence mainly cause you to resistant to the insulin receptors and 90-95% cases is type 2 diabetes mellitus, while type 1 diabetes can be seen in children also, it's only 5-10% to of cases and young adults where actually there is a cell mediated autoimmune destruction of the cells that create insulin in the pancreas, so this deficiency of insulin here. Also gestational diabetes during pregnancy is one of the category. So let us see what are the oral manifestations that we see in the diabetic patient first. Chilosis, chilitis, mucosal drying, cracking, burning mouth, tongue, dimness, salivary flow, xerostomia, and increased rate of dental caries. In diabetic patient, there is an alteration in the flora of the oral cavity. They have more dominant candida albicans infection, hemolytic streptococci are increased as well as staphylococci. So it's important to know that these changes are not always present, that they are not specific. Individual with controlled diabetes can just have a normal tissue response. The influence on diabetes on the periodontium leads to enlarged gingiva. So, silopedunculated gingival polyps can be seen, polypoid gingival proliferation, formation of abscess, periodontitis, and the loosened teeth. The most striking changes in the patient with the uncontrolled diabetes is the reduction in the host immune response or defense mechanism, so that they have more susceptibility to the infections, which lead to destructive perio disease. In fact, perio disease is considered to be the sixth complication of the diabetes. So, children with type 1 diabetes, they see more destruction around the first molars and incisors. But this destruction can become more generalized as the child ages. The periodontal disease in patients with diabetes follow no consistent or distinct pattern though. Severe gingival inflammation, deep perio pocket, rapid bone loss and frequent perio abscesses are often seen in patients with poorly controlled diabetes and with poor hygiene. So the increased glucose that they have in the blood and GCF with the diabetes could actually change the environment of the bacteria here thereby inducing qualitative changes in the bacteria that may contribute to more severity of the periodontal disease. So patient with type 1 diabetes, mellitus and periodontitis, they have a subgingival flora which has capnocytophagia in it, actinomyces in it, porphyromonas, pivetola and campylobacter. Now the PMN or the neutrophil functions, 
Increased susceptibility of the patient with diabetes to infection has been hypothesized as being caused by PMN deficiencies that are created so that there is impaired chemotaxis and defective response from the neutrophil which are actually your soldiers. So they have impaired response. In patients with poorly controlled diabetes, the function of the PMN or neutrophil monocytes and macrophages is also impaired. So primary defense mounted by PMN against periodontal pathogens is then diminished and the bacteria are more likely to proliferate now. Although there is no alteration in the IgA antibody, IgG or IgM in the patient with diabetes. Also in the diabetic patient with a chronic hyperglycemia, it affects the synthesis, maturation and maintenance of collagen and the extracellular matrix. Chronic hyperglycemia can cause protein and matrix molecule to undergo a non-enzymatic glycosylation and can result in forming of AEG products which is advanced glycosylation end products. The AGE and receptor for AGE play a central role in the classic complication of diabetes and they play a significant role in progression of periodontal disease as well. So when you have poor glycemic control with increased AGEs, renders the periodontal tissue more susceptible to destruction because there will be impaired tissue integrity now, altered collagen metabolism and altered cellular response to local factor. So chronic hyperglycemia is going to impair the collagen structure and function which may directly impact the integrity of periodontium and the formation of AGE occurs at normal glucose levels as well. However, in hyperglycemic environment, AGE is too much production. So collagen becomes cross-linked by AGE formation, which makes the collagen less soluble and less likely to be repaired or replaced. Cellular migration through cross-linked collagen is impeded and performed. More importantly, the tissue integrity is impaired here as a result of damaged collagen. As a result, collagen in the tissue of patients with poorly controlled diabetes is older and more susceptible to pathogenic breakdown. Now the metabolic syndrome used to describe a condition of abdominal obesity with two or more metabolic disturbances, right? Hypertension, dyslipidemia and hyperglycemia. With obesity, you have excessive adipose tissue that will contribute to increased systemic pro-inflammatory response in the individual. So they have higher risk for severity and progression of periodontitis. So the association between the periodontitis and metabolic syndrome is thought to be the result of systemic oxidative stress and increased inflammatory response. Obesity students also associated with increased cytokine production as well as T-cell and monocyte macrophage dysfunction that can lead to periodontitis. Now let's see student one other condition uh, which increases the chance of periodontal disease is hyperparathyroidism. So in hyperparathyroidism, we have increased secretion of PTH hormone. So PTH more secreted will resolve more of the bone to increase the blood calcium level. It will lead to generalized demineralization of the skeleton, increased osteoclast action with proliferation of the connective tissue in the enlarged marrow spaces and formation of bone cyst and presence of giant cell tumor. So this disease is also called as von Richthofen disease of the bone or ostitis fibrosa cystica. So in hyperparathyroidism, late sign is loss of lamina dura and formation of giant cell tumor in the jaws. Loss of lamina dura we know can also be seen in Peges disease, fiber dysplasia and also osteomalacia. So you can see 25 to 50 percent patient with the hyperparathyroidism, they have some oral changes. You can see malocclusion, tooth mobility, there is radiographically, we will see osteoporosis, widening of the pedial space, absence of lamina dura and radiolucent cyst-like spaces can be seen. Ground glass appearance in hyperparathyroidism. Secondary hyperparathyroidism that shows with the advanced kidney disease like in a middle-aged female along with loss of lamina dura. Now, hematological disorders and immunodeficiency diseases, blood cells, of course, they help in maintenance of healthy perio. WBC are involved in inflammatory reaction and they are also responsible for your defense mechanism as well as formation of pro-inflammatory cytokine release. While RBC, we know they are responsible for gas exchange and nutrition supply to the periodontal tissue. Hemorrhagic tendencies can be seen when normal hemostatic mechanism are disturbed. So it can lead to abnormal bleeding from the gingiva and it's an important clinical sign that there is a hematological disorder. So hematological disorder can show pitiches or ecchymosis which are pinpoint hemorrhages, the pitiches or ecchymosis which are deeper hemorrhages in the subcutaneous tissue like in the soft palate area. They are also the sign of underlying bleeding disorders. You can see on the palate these are pinpoint hemorrhages. There is a Pitiche, like in case of thrombocytopenia when you have less platelets and more bleeding tendencies. These are ecchymosis. You can see bigger size hemorrhages that you see in soft pellet and tonsillar pillars in this patient of thrombocytopenia. Now neutrophil disorders, 
production of functional leukocyte affected periodontal destruction we know because neutrophils are your soldiers so it will increase the chance of bacterial infection like neutropenia agranulocytosis you can have decreased neutrophil with more generalized periodontal destruction that affects all the teeth so neutropenia can be effect of diseases medication chemical infections idiopathic conditions while agranulocytosis it only involves the neutrophils where you see ulceration in the oral cavity oropharynx gingival hemorrhages necrosis increase salivation antibody deficiency syndrome like agammaglobinemia hypoglycemia where antibodies are reduced by deficiency in b cell here also you can see patients are more susceptible to periodontal infection now leukemias are malignant neoplasia of the wbcs we have abnormal wbcs which are multiplying here so that will reduce the normal production of normal rbc wbc and platelets that will lead to anemia less platelet thrombocytopenia and neutrophils reduced so you can see the picture of a leukemic patient there is a gingival swelling here of the interdental papillae between the maxi central and lateral you can see and induration of the area you can see also the large ulceration here on the palate of a patient with granulocytopenia secondary to leukemia and these typical ulceration are caused by herpes virus here so absence of clinically detectable gingivitis you see gingival hemorrhage in the leukemic patient that's a very important sign so bleeding from gingiva is a early sign of leukemia along with along with oral ulcerations and infection now genetic disorder like chidiac hijashi syndrome lazy leukolyte syndrome lazy leukocyte syndrome down syndrome they are also associated with high chance of periodontium damage especially the down syndrome there is formation of deep pocket with lots of plaque and moderate gingivitis now papillary leftover syndrome student is important it's characterized by palmo plantar hyperkeratosis early loss of primary and permanent teeth and the calcification of the dura mater so primary teeth can be lost by 5 or 6 years of age the permanent dentition erupts normally but within few years the permanent teeth are also lost at a very early age 15 to 20 years patient will be completely edentulous and the tooth extraction site although will heal uneventfully the main sign you can see in the 17 year old patient here palmar and the plantar under the foot you see hyperkeratosis intraoral clinical view of papillary leftover syndrome you can see there is early tooth loss here gingival recession missing teeth were exfoliated actually now psychological condition particularly stress has also been linked to periodontal disease so both stress and psychosomatic disorder they affect the perio health change while changes in individual behavior and through complex interaction among the nervous endocrine and the immune system the individual which are under stress may have poor oral hygiene they may start or increase the clenching and grinding of the teeth they may also smoke more frequently because stress increases the cortisol production stress suppresses your immune function suppresses your neutrophil activity igg production it will suppress and also suppress the salivary iga production so this immune response are critical for your normal inflammatory response if they are reduced definitely you have more chance of perio nutritional deficiency see nutritional deficiency by themselves they don't cause gingivitis or periodontitis but nutritional deficiency can affect the condition of perio may underline the deleterious effect of plaque induced inflammation susceptible individual you can see these alterations like vitamin a deficiency changes in epithelial tissue leading to keratinized metaplasia vitamin d deficiency increase severity of periodontitis b complex deficiency can lead to gingivitis glossitis glossodynia anglocolitis inflammation of the mucosa vitamin c deficiency is related with bleeding gingiva swollen loosening teeth is a common feature of scurvy bisphosphonate medications are primarily used to treat the cancer and osteoporosis they work by inhibiting the osteoclastic activity which can lead to less bone resorption less bone remodeling and less bone turnover bisphosphonate are also known to have anti angiogenic effect they can also decrease your blood flow that can lead to bisphosphonate induced osteonecrosis of the jaw steroids in human the systemic administration of cortisone hormone appears to have no effect on incidence and severity of gingival and perio disease however the renal transplantation patients who are receiving the steroids have significantly less gingival inflammation than the control subject with similar amount of plaque